about you, but I'm going to rejoice and be glad in it. Hallelujah. We are so thankful, so thankful to be here on today. Amen. This is uh, this is a challenging day for me right now. This is a challenging day for my family, but nevertheless, God is still good. God is still good. And I made up in my mind that I said, you know, no matter what comes, I'm going to go ahead. I'm going to continue to serve him. Hey, I'm going to continue to worship him. I'm going to continue to praise him. Uh, I actually thought about getting somebody else to preach today, but I said, you know what? I said, I, I, you know, I, I know that God deserves my best. Amen. And I'm still, and, I, and I'm still going to stand here. I'm going to still give the word that God has given me to give you today. Amen. But before we do that, can we just take a few moments to just kind of fellowship a little bit with one another, let each other know how glad we are to see you. Can we just do that at this time? Amen. 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 One more time. Amen. Amen. All right. Let me turn this mic off and turn this one on. Amen. All right. All right. Um, again, uh, just so thankful. Just put me down just a little bit, Brother Donald, if you don't mind. Amen. Just so um, thankful once again just to uh, be here. Uh, just in fellowship right here at the Experience Church. Also, let's put our hands together. Thank God for our social media audiences. Facebook Live, Instagram Live. Thank you all so much for joining us here at the Experience Church today. Amen. Um, just asking you all, y'all, please, I thank church, thank y'all so much for your prayers and everything that um, during our family's time of bereavement, uh, those of y'all who were able to make the services on yesterday, thank you all so, so very much. We definitely feel your prayers. We definitely feel your prayers. And I'm just so thankful that, um, that I, you know, that I had the opportunity on yesterday to actually do one to accomplish one of the hardest preaching tasks I ever had in the 15 years I've been preaching and that was to eulogize my father amen that was it was a challenge it really was but I thank God that he was able to carry me through it and I was able to make it through amen and nevertheless uh, we just thank God for his life we thank God because I know we didn't see him much here at the experience however but uh, when we first started we got installed he was here amen and whenever he wasn't here he sent his money can you say amen amen so we definitely thank God for that as a matter of fact when we were getting ready to move into this building he sowed a nice seed for us to help us get in here amen amen so we were so thankful but nevertheless I want to continue on in our series of preaching we've been dealing with uh, didn't really want to break this series I want to keep it going uh, and we're in this what God wants series what God wants as you know last week we talked about God wants my worship we talked about how God expects for us to worship him and not just worship him but worship him in spirit and in truth and today we're going to talk about God wants honor God wants honor that's what we're going to talk about today we're just going to talk about honoring God okay because like we said last week we, we worship God we we we, uh, we enter into moments of worship to where we worship God and worship goes beyond the four walls of the sanctuary it goes beyond the four walls of the worship center but worship can actually be carried out in your house it can be carried out in your car it can be carried out in your break room at work the bathroom wherever you choose to worship it can be carried out there amen so so worship is something that should be a lifestyle can you say amen 
name. Amen. But I want to move on to the next thing. We want to talk about just honoring God. God wants honor. That's going to be the title of this message today. God wants honor. Uh, don't have a whole lot of uh, theoretical and philosophical things to share. It's, this is going to be very practical today. Amen. It's going to be very practical. And it's really, when we talk about God wanting honor, there are really, um, there are many areas in our lives that God wants honor. And I don't want to be redundant or repetitive because I know on next week we're going to talk, if, I mean, if the Lord says the same on next week, we're going to talk about attendance. And I know we have uh, Easter coming up uh, that first Sunday in April. So we uh, might, might just kind of do an Easter message that first Sunday. Then on that second Sunday in April, if the Lord says the same, we'll talk about how God wants our time. Amen. But right here, we want to talk about honoring God. And the one of the first areas that I really want us to look at honoring God with is honoring God with our talents honoring God with our talents and if we want and we want to go to a particular passage of scripture here and what I want to look at is in Matthew chapter 25 Matthew 25 I'm gonna have a few scriptures we're gonna look at today but the first one's in Matthew 25 and I'm gonna read from starting at verse 14 all the way down to verse 30. Matthew 25 verses 14 through 30. I know it's quite a lot of verses, but I really want to, I want us to see something here. Amen. Because we're talking about honoring God with our talents. Now, starting at verse 14, it says, For the kingdom of heaven is like a man traveling to a far country who called his own servants and delivered his goods to them. And to one he gave five talents, to another two, and to another one, to, uh, to each according to his own ability. And immediately he went on a journey. Then he who had received the five talents went and traded with them and made another five talents. And likewise, he who had received two gained two more also. But he who had received one went and dug in the ground and hid his Lord's money. After a long time, the Lord of those servants came and settled accounts with them. So he who had received five talents came and brought five other talents, saying, Lord, you delivered me five talents. Look, I have gained five more talents besides them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You are faithful over a few things. I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. He who also, I mean, I'm sorry, he also who had received two talents came and said, Lord, you delivered to me two talents. Talents. Look, I have gained two more talents beside them. His Lord said to him, well done, good and faithful servant. You have been faithful over a few things and I will make you ruler over many things. Enter into the joy of your Lord. Now watch this right here. Then he who had received the one talent came and said, Lord, I knew you to be a hard man. Reaping where you have not sown and gathering where you have not scattered seed. And I was afraid and I went and hid your talent in the ground. Look, there you have what is yours. But his Lord answered and said to him, you wicked and lazy servant. You knew that I reap where I have not sown and gathered where I have not scattered seed. So you ought to have deposited my money with the bankers and at my coming I would have received back my own with interest. So take the talent from him. And give it to him who has ten talents. For everyone who has, more will be given, and he will have abundance. But from him who does not have, even what he has will be taken away. And cast the unprofitable servant into the outer darkness. There will be weeping and gnashing of teeth. Now, ain't that something right there? Ain't that something? Be this, I mean, let's look at this story here because you notice the one who had the, t the, the five talents went and gained five more. Then the one who had the two talents went and gained two more. But this one person had this one, one talent. 
one talent and many times let me talk about that because we talk about talents your talent I'm, I'm, I'm not just talking about talents in the church I'm talking about whatever talents that you have now every one of us in here have a different measure of talents we have a different measure of talents I, my talents might not be like yours yours might not be like mine but each of us have different types of talents but the question is what are you doing with the talents that you have there are so many gifts that are, are in the body of Christ that are not even being used. You might have a gift, whether it's to sing, you might have a gift to teach, you might have a gift even just to do hospitality or to, you might have a gift to cook. Amen. What are you doing with those talents? Are you using them and are you actually uh, growing them? Or are you just taking the little talent you have or you burying it in the ground? That's what I want to ask y'all today. I, I, I'm, I'm, I'm just curious because if I truly want to honor God, I must honor him with my talents. So whatever it is, whatever measure it is, whatever level my talents on, I need to cultivate and grow what I have. Can you say amen? Amen. And, and I made the mistake. Earlier on, when we first started the church, I said, you know what? I'm not going to, you know, I, I know I've been minister of music for 14 plus years. I ain't going to play no more. I'm just going to go ahead and just, I'm just going to pastor, focus on preaching, and just let that be it. I'm just going to preach. I'm just going to pastor my church, and, that, and that'll be it. But I got convicted. And the reason why I got convicted, because I know that God gave me other talents besides what I'm doing right now. Really, this is not even a talent. This is a calling. This is an anointing that God has on my life that I'm operating in right now but there are some other gifts that God has given me and if somebody need if those gifts if those gifts need to be used to bless the body of Christ then I've got to be willing to bless the body of Christ with the talents that God gave me so that means if somebody called me and say doc man my music ministry is in trouble we don't have anybody can you come help us out my, my minister of music is going on vacation next week can you come just fill in then I've got to use those talents that God gave me why because not only am I just using it to bless the body but also God grows me in those areas as I use those talents and those gifts so you got to honor God we have to honor God with our talents again your talent your talents those are your God-given gifts and abilities. Now, I mean, now look at this servant right here. Look at the servant. The servant. He had, one, I mean, the, 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 I'm, I'm looking at the servant that had the one talent. That one little talent. He could have taken that one talent and he could have invested it. He could have done something with it. He really could have. And he missed out on having more because he really didn't think that much of what he already had. He didn't think that much of it. So, so you got to remember that, church. We have to, we have to use our talents. We have not just you, but we use them to honor and to glorify God. Can you say amen? Amen. So we honor God with our talents. Now, not only am I to honor God with my talents, but I'm also to honor God with my treasure. Oh, I don't get too many amens when we talk about that. I'm going to get a sip of water on that. I'm going to let that just kind of sink in for a minute. See, people don't like talking about that kind of stuff. Honor the Lord with your treasure. Okay, now y'all see what's on the screen, right? This means your finances. This means your finances. Church, do you hear me? This means your finances, your money, the dollar dollar bill. Amen. And Jesus said, where your treasure is, there will your heart be also. He said that in Matthew 6 and 21. Also, write down Proverbs 3 and 9. It says, honor the Lord with your possessions and with the first fruits of all your increase. Now, let me tell you something, because there's a difference between first fruits and tithing. There's a difference between first fruit. Now, tithing, of course, we're going to talk about that in the next scripture. But let me talk about first fruit. First fruits is basically this, that your very first increase that you get at the beginning of the season, the beginning of the year, you take that whole increase and you give it to God. That's, the, that's what first fruit is. So, so basically, you take your whole first check of the year. 
and you give it to God. And, and many times, many churches do not teach on first fruit giving, that, but that is a very intricate part because let me tell you something about first fruit. At first, I wasn't really big on it. I'm just going to be honest with you. I wasn't big on it. My thing is people just ought to pay their tithes and their offering and the Lord will bless and all that kind of stuff. But let me share something with you about first fruit, okay? Now, there, and, 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 I, and we know many people have testimonies, but there is one lady in particular that we know at our church that we came out of. Every year, she faithfully gives her first fruit offering. Every single year. She's been doing it for years. And if you look at her life now, God has blessed her in areas just that you can't even imagine. She has um, her, her, her uh, she has a daughter that is in law school. Uh, I think, I don't know if she graduated yet, but I believe, I believe she's in law school now on a full scholarship. Didn't going to law school, TSU law school, not paying a ain't paid a dime for it. And there are other needs in her life that's been met. Bills been paid off. God just, you know, just blessing her family like never before. Why? Because she's obedient and she gave the first fruit of her of all her increase. And I'm telling you, and many times it's hard just to give folk just to pay a simple get a, give a simple offering. You, I mean, you come to church nowadays, you ask for $20, people act like they're going to have a heart attack. Oh, Lord, $20. Uh, but yet again, again, going back to Matthew 6, he said, where your treasure is, that's where your heart is. What are you spending your money on? Are you honoring God with your money? Are you, I mean, are you, and when I say that, I'm not just so much talking about just giving it to the church and all that kind of stuff, but, but I'm asking you, do you know how much time, how much money we waste? And I'm saying we, because I'm talking about myself. Do y'all know, I calculated, y'all, I calculated uh, one time, I looked at my bank statement, and I calculated how many times I eat out in a month. And I'm not talking about, like, you know, date nights and all that kind of stuff. I'm talking about just, just basically, like, little lunch stuff. Okay, Taco Bell here. Burger King here. Water Burger there. Uh, you know, some of these other little places you go to. Chipotle here. Just, I mean, just, I mean, all this kind of stuff. And I calculated one time, it was one month, it was about a couple of years ago, I think we spent about mm, almost $500 in one month on junk. And I was like, wait a minute, this is, this ain't right. This, you know, and then yet you know, we look and then we, we, and then we look and it's time to pay bills. I was like, oh Lord, well, how are we going to do this? <laughs> see, the thing is, see, this is what we do. See, see, we, we, we beg, what they say, you beg for, uh, you beg for what you need. No, you buy what you want and beg for what you need. Is that the, something? Yeah, that's what, that's what a lot of people do. Uh, yeah, and and, and y'all, and I'm telling you, uh, God, let me tell you, first of all, if it wasn't for God, we wouldn't have any money in the first place. So let's keep that in mind. So, I mean, you, we've got to remember, church, that we've got to honor God with our money. Is God pleased with what we're doing with our money? Do you have to go to Starbucks every morning? Do you have to stop by Krispy Kreme every time the hot sign is on? <laughs> Sisters, do you have to get the diamonds on your nails when you get your nails done? Now, I'm not, look, y'all, I'm not discriminating women. I'm not, yo, go get your nails, get them toes done, all that. Because don't no man want to see no woman with no ugly, messed up feet. Amen. You know, and I, I go get pedicures too. Amen. I don't want to be laying in bed and scratching my wife up with my toenails. Amen. I'm just saying. Uh, you know, it's, it's nothing wrong. It's nothing wrong with that. Go take care of yourself. Pamper yourself every now and then. But the thing is, do you have to have all the extra stuff? Let me talk about this. Do you have to, every new phone that comes out, do you have to get it? Yo, I'm, I'm still, I, I'm, I still, I'm, I know I've been eligible for an upgrade. I still got this Note 5. I mean, you know, and I've been, I, I was thinking, I'm going to give me this iPhone 10. I'm like, man, do I really need that right now? I mean, if I want it, I'm, I'll go ahead on and get it, but I got to make sure I prioritize. Can you say amen? I got to make sure I'm honoring God with this money. Also, not only do I honor God with, the, uh, with my possessions and the first fruit of my increase, but I also, uh, if you look at uh, Malachi chapter 3 and 10, we used to quote this all the time, bring all the tithes into the storehouse that there may be meat in my house. 
Amen. And that and says, I'm sorry, and try me in this. Now I'm sorry, and try me now in this, says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open for you the windows of heaven and pour you out, uh, pour out for you such a blessing that there will not be room enough to receive it. So yeah, we talk about the first fruit offering, but guess what? Even if you hadn't gotten your, your faith hadn't got to the point of first fruit offering, you ought to be bringing the tithe in the offering. That, oh my God, I got one. Mm, okay, thank you, preacher. I'm glad you're with me because I, I feel like I'm by myself out here. We, we, Y'all, oh, help me, Jesus. Oh, okay. When, when we talk about tithing, see, see, the thing is with, with us, see, if I was up here talking about how God's going to bless and all you got to do is turn around three times and God's going to pay all your bills and you come here and shout and dance on your bills and God's going to pay them off. Again. But as soon as you say, bring the tithe, it gets silent. Y'all, I've been in church literally all my life. And especially, oh Lord, in musicals, it's really bad. In musicals, Rayshard, Nick, y'all can help me with this. In musicals, it's really bad. Man, boy, you go to the, uh, when, they, when they would do the Houston Fifth Sunday Mass Choir musical, man, you go, they bring that huge choir in there and they singing and, and singing, directing and, and shouting and dancing. But as soon as Dr. Anthony Macbeth gets up and says, y'all, it's time for the offering, everybody get quiet. Like, uh, here we go. And then the same folk who was up there, I mean, say for who was shouting, they just, I mean, they, ooh, mm. no, everybody got to go to the bathroom all of a sudden. They got to go hang out outside. Man, oh, let me go see if my drummer made it here. Yeah, let me go out there. Now, everybody, everybody got something to do. You start digging in your purse. You ain't digging for no money. You start checking your phone. Everybody, all of a sudden, everybody call all of a sudden. I talk, oh, let me go see. I got to see what time I got to pick my baby up. But everything else gets more important. When you start talking about that offering. And I mean, it's just, I don't know what it is. But I don't know. It's like, especially in our culture, we don't like to give. We don't like to give. And then, but in the, in the, it is not the pastor or the preacher's responsibility to beg us and pump us and prime us to give. All, it, all our responsibility is, is to give you what the word of God says. And the word of God says if you truly want to be blessed, you've got to bring your tithe and an offering. Can you say amen? Amen. amen. That's how you get blessed. Tithing is something that should be embedded into our lifestyles on a regular basis. Just like you sit down and calculate your bills up. off the top your tithe needs to come out that's what needs to happen even if you got to choose we had one sister um, in our old church she used to just go ahead on her online banking every month she had a tithe automatically taken out and had it sent to the church there's nothing wrong with that because that first of all that's how the church is run first of all and secondly that's how you get your blessing see y'all gotta understand see pastor the pastors we're not trying to get money from y'all that's not what we're trying to do because see God is meeting our needs because we're obedient to his word so so that's not even an issue we're trying to help you all to get blessed can you say amen today? We're trying to put some money in your pocket. We're trying to keep things going well in your household. And let me tell y'all, man, whew, let me tell you, the reason why God has kept my wife and I over these last almost 17 years is because we believe in sowing. We believe in tithing. We believe in giving an offering. It didn't just start when we started the church. Amen. It started before, way before we started the church because even when I was living at home, my parents taught me that 10% goes to the Lord. When I first started my little church job, my mom, the first thing she asked me, did you take your tithe out? Do I need to take it out for you? Do you need to have it automatically deducted from your check? You know, and man, when I was working in New Faith, man, that was just, that was the bomb because they just went on, they could just take, you just tell man, Ronald, just take it out of my check, man. Just take it out. And you had to worry about it then. You saw that, well, you know, it's fair Musicians got it real bad, man. We hold on to them keys when that offering play go. Uh, you know, we get, we got it real bad. But but I mean, that's tithing is something that's been embedded for me. You know, ever since I started getting paid to do stuff. 
and, and even our children. We're teaching our children now to give. When we go back into children's church, they're going to receive an offering in the children's church. You got to teach the kids how to give. Can you say amen? Amen. That's, that's how this thing works. So, so I honor God. I honor him with my money. I honor him with my treasure. Can you say amen? All right. So not only do I honor him with talents and treasure, I'm going to move on because I could preach a whole sermon on that. But I also honor God with my ticker. That's my heart. Honor God with your ticker. This means your heart. There are many Bible verses that encourage us to make God number one in our heart. One of them is this, Isaiah 29, 13. Therefore the Lord said, Inasmuch as these people draw near with their mouths and honor me with their lips, but have removed their hearts far from me, and their fear toward me is taught by the con uh, commandment of men. So that means that, yeah, you all, yeah, you saying stuff with your mouth. You come to church every Sunday. You sing the praise songs. You lifting your hands. You shout. You dancing. You, you speaking in tongues, but your heart is far from me. How do I know your heart's far from me? Because I watch how you act when you walk out them door. No, forget that. I watch how you act when you come off that stage. Wow. Sister Nicole spoke to you. You just going to roll your eyes and keep on walking. No. Brother Phillips tried to reach out to shake your hand. Wow. That, that's, that means your heart. That, that's, that's, that's not a God thing. That means your heart is far from me. Yeah. Amen. The, that means I'm not honoring God with my heart. Can you say amen? So, so that's what Isaiah says. He says I have to. He says that um, it says you honor me with your lips. But your heart is far from me. Not only that, but watch this. Proverbs uh, 3 and 5 says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart and lean not to your own understanding. We know that, right? Okay. Proverbs 4.23, Keep your heart with all diligence, for out of it springs the issues of life. Keep your heart. Guard your heart. Amen. So, so, so you have to keep that in mind. The heart is very important. Proverbs 23, 26. My son, give me your heart and let your eyes observe my ways. Psalm 51, 10. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit in me. So I honor God with my heart. My heart has to be in the right place because if my heart is not in the right place, I cannot fully honor God. Yeah. It has to be in the right place. And, and many folks, many times, we, we see people all the time, whether it's at church, whether it's at work, whether it's in our families. You know how some people just got the, I mean, just the wrong kind of heart. Motives just all in the wrong place. I mean, just, it's like, man, what is wrong with you? A lot of times, people say, oh, they just got a bad attitude. A lot of times, it's not an attitude issue. You know what it is? It's a heart issue. It's a heart issue. And if, you ever, if you're ever going to really honor God, you got to check your heart issues. You got to see where your heart is. Are you really loving like you're supposed to love? Are you really treating people like you're supposed to treat them? Come on, talk back to me. Are you really being the type of person that God really wants you to be? Check your heart. Amen. That's why I'm, I'm real. I'm not, I'm not the type of pastor. I'm not the type of leader. That's why I can't let any and everybody get up and, and share stuff with us. Us and, and, and lead in this church because a lot of times hearts aren't in the right place. What you call ulterior motives are, are just everywhere. You just want a position. You know, oh man, I mean, I've had people, oh, I, I would love to come work with your children. I'd love to come work with your music ministry. I just love to come, I want to come be on your prayer ministry. You need a prayer ministry, Pastor. But then, I mean, yo, I mean, man, your heart ain't, ain't in it. You just trying to get a little check or you just trying to get some recognition. You just trying to get a title. No. We're not doing that. Amen. So, so I'm honored. That's how, that's how I honor God. So again, again, let me close by saying this. I honor God with my talents. I use my talents to glorify God. I honor God with my treasure. That means my, my money has to be, it has to be in, in, in line. My talents are in line. My money got to be in line. And my heart got to be in line. Can you say amen? Amen. I'm done, y'all. Let's give God a hand clap of praise. That's it. Amen. That, that's it. That, that is the word for the day. How God wants honor. Amen. Now, uh, this thing. All right. I think I'm just kind of moving around a little too much. I don't know what's up. But, but yeah. So next week, if the Lord says the same, we're going to talk about honoring God with our attendance. With our attendance. So y'all tell everybody who wasn't here to be at church next Sunday. Amen. 
Amen. Y'all tell them to be at church next Sunday. All right. So as the music plays softly, we're going to go ahead. And what I want to do right now is I want to just take a moment and minister to our Facebook uh, live audience. Those, uh, first of all, thank you all for watching. And secondly, you might be uh, watching us today and you might not have a relationship with Jesus Christ. Because one of the main ways you can really truly honor God is by accepting his son, Jesus Christ. So what I want to do is I want to give you an opportunity to get to know him today. And I want you just to bow your head with me. And if you know that you're not saved, I want you to repeat this prayer after me. And I want you to say it and I want you to mean it in your heart. I want you to say this prayer. Say, Dear God in heaven, I acknowledge that I'm a sinner. I repent of my sins and I turn away from them. And I give my life to you. I believe that Jesus is your son that he died for all my sins, and that you raised him from the dead. Lord Jesus, I ask that you would come into my life and save me. Guide me, lead me, and teach me to live this Christian life. Right now, I receive you by faith as my Savior and my Lord. And I thank you, Jesus, for saving me. I give my life to you. Amen. Amen. If you said that prayer today and you meant it in your heart, you are now saved. You are now a part of the family of God. Now, the next thing we encourage you to do is become a part of a Bible teaching, Bible believing church, and out of obedience to Christ, be baptized. Amen. And we thank you again so much for watching. If you accepted Christ, I want you to send us a message or leave us a comment letting us know and put us in contact with you so we can uh, share some things with you as far as your next steps. Because it doesn't just stop today, but your life in Christ continues on even after today. So get in touch with us email us send us a message um, at the experience church.org or even on our facebook page and we'll definitely um, get back to you amen so can we say amen everybody amen so so all right we're gonna move on and it's time for us to honor god with our treasure amen it's time for us to honor god with our treasure that means it's time to sow a seed into the kingdom amen, amen. can y'all hear me y'all out there amen amen <laughs> work with me y'all work with me all right as we prepare to give once again as always i encourage us to sow our best seed into the kingdom of the experienced church Hey man, I don't know if we had the annou announcement video or anything like that. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll work and we'll tighten that up by next week. Amen? Amen, because I don't know this week has been crazy. I'm just going to be honest with you. I did not get much work done this week but nevertheless we're back in the swing of things you know i know spring break is over you know many of us getting ready to go back to work go back to school uh so yeah it's, it's, uh, it's time to get back to our regular normal routines amen so um also uh we'll be right back here we you know we had had recharge in about two y'all had like a good what two to three week break that first week y'all gave yourselves that first week off I'm not going to get into that right now. Uh, of course, the week uh, we had, I think, I gave us that the other week off, then, of course, spring break. So, y'all, we got to jump right back in it. We're still on Disciples Path. We're going to jump right back in it because I don't want us to, you know, spend too much time away from recharge because we definitely want to get that going and we definitely want to build it and grow it and continue on. Now, as you know, um, the next Sunday is Palm Sunday, right? Next Sunday is Palm Sunday, so we definitely uh, make sure, you know, this, you know, we need to start now, you know, really pushing and inviting people to come share with us on Easter Sunday. It's going to be a lot of folks looking for a church to go to. As a matter of fact, I think we're going to go ahead and boost the uh, Resurrection Sunday post. I'm not going to really, I'm not going to boost the Palm Sunday. I'm going to boost Resurrection Sunday post because I want to let people know, hey, you know, come worship with us because if it's a Sunday, anybody going to be at church. It's going to be when? It's going to be on Easter Sunday. Amen. Amen. So we definitely uh, want to have a nice full house on Easter Sunday. Amen. Amen. Also, uh, I don't want to get to um, this is really an announcement for another church. But um, on next Sunday, also, I believe it's March 20. It's March 24th or 25th. 
25th. Um, our dear friend, Pastor Jamel Kemp, they're, she's, they're going to be celebrating their church anniversary. Amen. And they're going to be having it here next Sunday afternoon, right here in our building. Amen. Amen. So, um, and I believe uh, Dr. Cosby, Wheel Avenue is going to be the guest. So, um, I'm going to need to get the brothers together to come to the house once again. We got to get the U-Haul, get those black chairs, and we need to get them in the building by Saturday night. 